the mind to be steady. It has to feel at its ease. This is why the Buddha taught so many different topics of meditation. The commentaries list forty in all. Ten recollections, ten contemplations of corpses. Some people find that a congenial topic. It's easy for the mind to settle down. It's really riveting. And the four sublime attitudes, contemplation of food, all kinds of things you can focus on that are congenial for getting the mind to settle in and stay in the present moment. Not go chasing off after its thoughts. So the important principle while you're meditating is to feel at ease with your topic. The breath tends to be a topic that's congenial for most people, because after all it is the force that keeps you alive. And so if you're meditating on the breath, try to be friends with the breath. Be on good terms with the breath. And allow the breath to come in in a way that feels comfortable. Go out in a way that feels comfortable. Then as you get more and more familiar with it, you begin to gain a sense for how the breath can become even more comfortable, even more congenial. Because the more comfortable it is, the easier it is to stay with it. As long as your mindfulness is sharp, your awareness is all around. Sometimes there's a problem when the breath gets so comfortable and everything begins to shrink. Because the normal reaction of the mind is when you get really comfortable, you're ready to sleep. And so you're just going to let your awareness shrink down, and then you go into a blur and you don't know quite where you are. That's why John Lee recommends that when the breath begins to get comfortable, you spread your awareness to fill the body. And the Buddha recommends that himself. Train yourself to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, the whole body as you breathe out. And there are different ways of making the breath more comfortable. The important thing is that you allow the mind to exercise its ingenuity. In other words, don't think of this as a task, as something you're playing with. Think back to when you were a kid and you had time to just play around without any real purpose. And you learn to improvise games for yourself, toys for yourself. Try to bring that same sense of interest and ingenuity and enjoyment to the breathing as well, to the meditation as a whole. Because if the meditation doesn't engage your imagination, it's going to, you're going to have trouble. And if you have trouble deciding what kind of breath feels good, well, just stay with what you've got. Content yourself with what you've got and focus on it as continuously as you can. If you sense any tension coming up in the breath, just allow it to relax. In other words, you don't have to have all sorts of theories about what a good breath would be, but just notice what feels good right now. And you notice that a lot of the tension tends to seep in when mindfulness lapses, when you're not paying attention. So try to keep your awareness with the breath as if you were following a long strand of silk. You want the silk to be smooth, you want it to be even. And if any bumps come up, any fraying comes up, okay, you can stop and sort it out a little bit and then keep moving on, moving on. Don't worry.
worry about there being any outside judge as to whether your breath is comfortable enough or not. It's comfortable enough for you, that's what matters. Because after all, this is concentration practice, and concentration is a matter of being steady and being at ease with your topic. The more you're on good terms with your topic, the easier it will be to stay there. If you think of the process as just a lot of work, you're not going to be able to stick with it very long. Again, think of yourself when you were a child, just playing around. Think of the games you used to invent for yourself. And particularly the games when you started getting interested in something and followed through with it just for the sheer interest. They did a study a while back. They had some college students, presented them with a problem and gave them a big sheet of paper and said, okay, just free associate, come try to think up solutions to this particular problem. And the ones who did the best were the ones who, turned out, when they were children, had lots of unsupervised playtime, play that had no particular goal in mind, no particular task in mind, no particular structure. And they were able to entertain themselves as kids. Think of someone learning a guitar without any pressure to perform take the guitar into the room and just play around with it, trying this string, trying that string. And over time they begin to learn the guitar in their own way. And develop a very intimate relationship with it. So try to approach the breath in the same way. There's something you want to get intimate with, something you want to enjoy. And to regard this as a game, something you play with. Because it doesn't mean you're not serious about it, it just means that you have to look at your mind and see what works, what will keep the mind with the breath. And it has to engage your imagination, otherwise you're going to leave the breath pretty quickly. But if you find it interesting, you've got this energy flow in your body, and it reflects your state of mind. And it has an influence on the mind as well as having an influence on the body. And all you have to do is explore to see for yourself what the breath does that you like to the body, what it does that you like to the mind, what it does, what it does that you don't like for the body and mind. And then let that question itself guide you. What it'll do, it'll direct you in the, in the direction of the whole issue of skillfulness. What's a skillful way of breathing? What's a skillful way of thinking? What's a skillful way of focusing on the breath? What ways of breathing and thinking or focusing are not skillful? And then from the issues of skillfulness, you work up into the Four Noble Truths. And okay, what causes suffering? What is a path to the end of suffering? You can explain this in all kinds of formal doctrine, and sometimes that makes it intimidating. But if you get right down to the whole question of, how do you like to breathe? Well, go ahead and breathe that way. And then after a while, you find that you don't like breathing in that particular way, you just watch it for a while and see what other ways of breathing would be better. And this way you get more sensitive to what's going on in the, in the present. You get a greater sensitivity also to cause and effect that are all happening right here. Areas of your awareness that you've overlooked in the past. There's a whole gold mine right here, a big seam of gold that you've missed, but it's there for you to dig into. And 
if you don't regard this as a test or as a onerous task, but as an opportunity to explore. You've got this whole area of your awareness that you've overlooked, and it has a lot of potential. And right now you've got the time to work with it. So look at the breath as something you want to explore. Look at this time as an opportunity. If you bring the right attitude toward the practice, and that attitude will start showing its results. But that you're having to ask whether you're in this jhana or that jhana, or whether you've reached concentration or not. Just the fact that you get absorbed in what you're doing. That's the concentration right there.